I was wondering why everything smells like nitro and oh fuck, it's me. <laughs> I exhale nitro. Welcome back. Time for a little resurrection of the brute force engine. Up until now we've used this stuff to seal the two halves together. It's uh, engine sealant by Wirt. It's good stuff, but it's, it's not enough around the exhaust port area. We fixed that with uh, these copper seals from this annealed copper wire. And this worked for a while. I think the problem here is that there's four M6 bolts holding this together, clamping this together. Then there's the additional four eight mm studs that hold this onto the crankcase and uh, attaches the top, clamps everything together. I think maybe by disassembling, taking the top off a couple of times, I've relieved the pressure enough for this to not seal anymore. Like the clamping pressure has not been enough to crush this properly by these M6 bolts, the clamping pressure provided by these M6 bolts. And, uh, but it was enough with the M8 studs, but after taking it apart a couple of times, the pressure has kind of relieved and uh, the gap has been slightly opened up, enough to leak. One option is to find some suitable O-rings and put here in place of the copper seals. What I think I will do though, or at least try first, is just JB welding. The halves together they're not meant to be taken apart the two-part design is just so i could mill it in my uh, three-axis milling machine give this ample time to cure now. I've actually decided not to start machining the liner tonight. Wait until tomorrow so that I don't get overly excited and start pressing things together and it's not properly cured and things go to shit. The liner will need a little chamfer at the bottom for uh, easier piston installation and uh, better oil retention. That's something I can do now. Trust myself to do now. Without getting overly excited. The exhaust port bridge is bulging a bit. That will interfere with the hone. I'll relieve it a little bit now before honing. I'm going to relieve it more after honing. Pretty much on size. We're like 
two thousandths of a millimeter over. That's with intolerances, I'd say. Maybe five thousandths of a millimeter over at the bottom. 40.005 and 40.002 millimeters. That's spot on. That's all I have time for today. Tomorrow we'll chamfer the port edges and relieve the exhaust bridge. And uh, it's time for assembly and startup again. Between 0.4 and 0.5, that's good. Better not to rev it too high though. I caught the same thing as my kids. Puking and uh, diarrhea, hooray. It's on its way out of my system now though, because I'm really sweating and freezing at the same time. And that's a telltale sign that uh, that it's on its way out, back in business. New piston, ring and liner now. We need to do a couple of heat cycles, a little bit of running. I've run it through a couple of tanks now, which isn't much runtime at all with this engine. I can't use up all my fuel for braking, so that'll have to do. Start it up again, see how it performs under load. Forgot the screen recorder. It doesn't really want to rev out now. It's acting rich. I don't think it is though. I think it's uh, compression. Might be the ring not sealing properly yet. Could also be something wrong. I kind of regret not doing a compression test before starting it. Hard to tell what readings I should get now. At least I know what kind of numbers usually run fine on a 50cc. If we're above 100 psi, we're okay. On this gauge, I'm not saying 100 psi is okay. I'm just saying on this gauge, over 100 psi is okay. Over 100. Took a while to get there though. Makes me think the ring hasn't sealed properly yet. I guess we'll have to do some more running. A fresh plug can't hurt. I'm gonna see if I got a slightly smaller main jet. The fuel I'm running now is 10% versus 15% oil and that might make a difference. I'll have to order jets of smaller sizes, I didn't have any. I'll try to adjust this needle valve though. This is a 210 jet, I could always try to drill out a smaller jet to say 2 millimeters, but uh, it's very imprecise. A 2 millimeter drill might as well create a 2.1 or larger jet size. We'll try adjusting this. 
doesn't seem like I can do much here before there's no spring tension on that screw and uh, it will just rattle loose. We'll have to do this with the main jet then. Here's the 210 jet. I'll use this tapered pin as a gauge and mark it. And here's the one I drilled out to two millimeters. And you can see it is tighter by a little bit. Let's try this and see how it performs. Carb adjustments makes a difference here, but I have a feeling there's something going on with the reeds. There's this backfiring vibe now, and I haven't really changed much since last time when it didn't run rich. I think we'll have to look into the reeds. Or maybe it's just a rotary valve drive pulley slipping on its axle. That actually drives the ignition trigger too, which means the ignition has probably been extremely retarded. I think I got the set screen to kind of a false set when tightening it down and it came loose while running. We'll go with the green stuff this time. I'm double checking if my trigger wheel has slipped on the axle. This micrometer is zero at top dead center now. So that's about top dead center. And now I'm checking where the lobe, approximately where the lobe is triggering 15. So that's, that's, at, that's at where I set it. It's supposed to be 15 degrees. We'll have to check with our light. It's not that important, like actual numbers. We'll have to tune the ignition regardless. Ah, oh, fuck. Water is heating up, we'll soon be ready for another test. I actually got really sick after last time. And I think it's the fuel. I got a really sore throat and my lungs were hurting and I was coughing and uh, I'm taking precautions now. You probably can't hear me very well now, but I've been wearing gloves occasionally, but that's mostly been to protect parts from my dirty hands. I think I'm gonna try to remember to wear gloves while uh, handling the fuel. I have a feeling I'm slowly poisoning myself here. <laughs> I should put some fans here, have some positive pressure, because my beard isn't helping the ceiling. I've actually got some experience with tear gas and gas masks and beards. It's not a great match. What tipped me over the edge was the night after that previous run. I could actually smell nitromethane while exhaling. I was wondering why everything smells like nitro and oh fuck, it's me. <laughs> I exhale nitro. <laughs> Blow-off valve exhaust tube junction broke. Not the worst thing that could happen. We're getting 15 plus horsepower consistently now. It's time to start adding in more boost and less fuel, more timing. See what happens, see what breaks. See what breaks first, fix it, then repeat and repeat and repeat until nothing breaks and we're winning. See you next time.